Hello there again, friends. Today is 124-2022, and today is Odin Project Vlog Day 47. Um, didn't get a recording up yesterday. I apologize for that. Um, uh, not really apologize. Sorry, not sorry situation. It was my wife's birthday, so we celebrated and uh, had a lot of fun. So took the took the day off. Um, didn't get any screen time in. But today... Um, I worked on the project sum all or exercise sum all of the fundamentals part four of the uh, of the Odin project here. We're in uh, fundamentals part four and we're down here and doing um, the exercises and sum all. So I'll, what I'll do is we'll we'll get right into it and I'll show you what we'll go over the um, <clears throat> the readme and then I'll show you how I did it and then I'll show you the solution to how they they did it um, they they uh, both achieve the same result just a different way of getting there and as you guys know you there are many ways to skin a cat some may be better than others more efficiently but they all get the job done <clears throat> so this time I promise to remember to <clears throat> do my best to make sure everything's all blown up so you guys can see it so in case you're on a phone or whatever you'll still see everything just fine. So here's the readme file. Exercise 5, sum all, says implement a function that takes two integers and returns the sum of every number between and including them. And then, <clears throat> again, this is not <laughs> your code. Do not put this in your solution. But as an example, sum all 1 and 4 returns the sum of 1, 2, 3, and 4, which is 10. Hence, Think about how you would do this on pen and paper, and then how you might translate that process into code. Make sure you pay attention to the function's parameters, create a variable to hold the final sum, loop through the given numbers, on each iteration add the number to the sum, and return the sum after finishing the loop. So I, I uh, wrote down, I um, wrote my pseudocode on paper first, which got me started, got me basically all the way through this, these sections, and it was able to get me to pass the um, first test and then from there I had to make edits so with that said <coughs> let's get started <clears throat> excuse me so we start up here what they give you is a constant sum all equals function I have uh, parameter inputs uh, of num1 and num2 uh, I created a uh, variable called error and it equals a string of uh, error and, I, uh, and then I created a function of final sum, which gives it an initial value of zero to initialize it. And as we've seen before, I sprinkle in uh, when I'm testing and iterating and debugging, I run my console.log, so just ignore those. So we have another let statement here. I created a var variable called bigger value, which takes the value of math.max num1 and num2 are parameters. So I Googled that and math.max it returns the larger of a set of supplied numeric expressions so basically it's going to evaluate num1 and num2 the contents and it's going to spit out the maximum so whichever is the bigger of the two and that will be assigned to bigger value uh, and then uh, and secondly uh, let created a variable called smaller value and that equals math min which is exactly what it sounds like it's the opposite returns the smaller of a set of supplied numeric expressions and that again is looking at num1 and num2's value values uh, from the parameter and so smaller value will get the small number bigger value will get the bigger number and then again did some troubleshooting there and then here it starts an if statement um, I got this off of a, a Google Stack Overflow search. <clears throat> it's uh, <clears throat> this starts the evaluation. Um, so this is evaluating the type of. If you guys remember, the type of is defining. It will basically tell you whether it is a string, an object, or a number. Um, so if the type of num1 is in value and type string or if this is the double lines as the or or if type of num2 is in value and data type of string we're going to return error and if you remember up here error is the the um, 
what it's looking for is the output of a uh, error string and then it will uh, break out of that loop and, um, and and go back to the top and start over <clears throat> else if if, it, if that's not true if you you know none of that's true else if type one type of num one equals object same type of concepts now we're looking instead of strings we're looking at objects so if you remember it in the um, in the requirements um, actually they're not in the requirements so we'll go through this and I'll show you the test it's in the test file so else if type uh, type of, uh, type of num one is equal to object or type of num two is equal to object same thing return error <clears throat> and then it'll break out of that if else if if those aren't true um, bigger value if the bigger value which is this one up here we we got that va value from the math.max so this bigger value is equal to or greater than zero and not if an and on this one or not or but and and smaller value equal to or greater than zero so basically that's just basically saying long-winded way of saying as long as our bigger value and our smaller smaller value are not negative numbers we're going to process the loop and this starts the loop um, that loops through the sums so you have a four Here's your for statement, let i equal smaller value. So what we're doing is we're just assigning i to the smaller value, <clears throat> the math.min. And then i uh, it will be this, here's the, uh, ver here's the um, condition. i has to be equal to or less than bigger value. So if you remember in the, in the text, it says that um, we're iterate, each iteration we're adding the number to the sum. So that's kind of what we're what we're doing here, um, and then we're incrementing by one each every time. So we're going to iterate through. Final sum will be the equal of final sum plus i. So we're concatenating. Uh, we're not concatenating. We're iterating over. So final sum first run through will be zero um, because we have a final sum initialization of zero. So it'll be zero plus i. In this instance, i will be the smaller value. So, you know, example, say it was 1, so it would iterate again, and it would take that final sum, which would now be 1, plus whatever new i is, say it's 2, for example. Now, final sum will be uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, so final sum is 3. And then I had a console.log to make sure that, that functionality and that algorithm was working correctly, which it is. And then it will keep looping through until um, i is, no, is equal to bigger value, and then it will stop just like it says in the text uh, the requirements and then it will return final it will break out of the for loop and it will return final sum and then that's where the test will check um, else if bigger value else if this is not true meaning we have either bigger value or smaller value as a negative number we're going to return error and I put in this just for comments I put error throw for negative numbers. So this basically means that I put that in there since there's no logic in here. But um, this means that once it goes through all this, <coughs> if it successfully gets through all these ifs, the only other option is that it, it, it's an error because it's a negative number. One of one of two or both are negative numbers, and that's it. So um, I kind of went through that fast, but uh, if you need to rewind and watch this over. So here is the here is the test. So some uh, some numbers within the range, um, and these all pass by the way. Uh, if you notice right here, uh, I'll just run it real quick. There you go. Uh, six passed, six total, and all these are green checks. So going through them real quick. The first one is some numbers, uh, sums of numbers within the range, which that's what the loop does the for loop <clears throat> next test is works with large numbers and that's that's what the code does for um, the ma math min and max so we're identifying the big and the small values um, so that satisfies uh, that one um, actually no I'm sorry that's the third one the second one works with larger numbers um, that that passes no matter what because I have variables for everything I'm not I'm not setting anything 
I'm not hard coding anything in here. So, um, you know, num1, num2 can be any size they want. So the test three is, is if the num1 happens to be bigger than the num2, what do you do with that? And that's what the, that's what this code does. This basically assigns the min and the max. And so it doesn't matter whether what num1 is big or num2 is big. This is going to iron that out. And then that is sorted out, um, uh, in the, uh, LCIF right here. So this, this statement here, um, and then the for loop that it enters into straightens that out um, to make sure that we're using the smaller value first and it doesn't error out and we're looping through, um, iterating through to the bigger value. And then the next test is um, returns error with negative numbers. So that is my solution. Sorry, I keep flipping on the wrong thing. Errors with negative numbers. So that's um, that's uh, this one right here. This right here, uh, the last, basically the breakout else. So that's basically if this if ends up being any, any either one of them is true, which means that we have a negative number present, it will flip out and uh, bounce down and give me that break out the error and then leave the leave the if statement so that's that one and here's return errors with non number parameters so non numbers how I address that one was this part right here so your type of so this is where I got into stack overflow and learned about using type of the solution they have has you do something different but so this here addresses both strings and objects. So if either one, num1 or num2 uh, comes back is either a string or an object, we are going to error out on both of those. Yeah, I could, again, I've told you guys before, I'm a very verbose writer, so my code's very lengthy and typey, uh, but that's just the way I like it, at least for learning right now. I, so I could, you know, I could, you know, you know, concatenate these down into, you know, basically a one if statement, but um, as I was troubleshooting it, I was kind of having some problems, so I wanted to break them out, and uh, so when I had a problem, I knew it was related to either string or object, so, and I'm glad I did that, because I actually did have a problem with object, but uh, uh, needed to sort that out. I had to remember that w that when you send through an array like this, that's an object, not a string, and so, had I had it all in one line, I'd have a hard time troubleshooting it. Um, so it was easier to troubleshoot when I broke it out to its own if statement. So that's that. And that answers that one too. So it returns error with non-number non parameter. So here's an object, and here's a string, and that addresses both of those. So uh, real quickly, let's go over and take a look at their solution. Their solution is a lot simpler. I did have to read it a couple times to understand how they're doing it. But uh, so they have an if statement at the very top. So remember, bang before the uh, method means not. So basically, this is saying taking the min value. If the min is not a number, is integer number. So basically, as if min is not a number, or remember the double lines is or, or max number is not a number. Return error. So that's that's doing the doing one of the requirements and then second one is if min is less than zero or max is less than zero return error so that there is another requirement again they're just this is a lot cleaner way to do it um, I still would have put if I would have done this uh, this way I still would have, would have put my return statements on the next line but neither here nor there this this still works like I said all mine pass so it still gets the job done here's the next if so I had to read this one twice to understand what it's doing, but basically they're shuffling variables around. So, so this is, solves if your minimum number, uh, if your minimum number is greater than your maximum number, meaning the 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 number assigned to min is actually say five, and the max here is assigned one. Um, they basically that's why I don't like them using min and max because that's confusing. That's why I use num one num two because I I knew that I wouldn't know what's really being valued into those parameters so anyways so they're shuffling around here so they create a constant temp which takes the value of min 
and then min takes the value of max, and then max takes the value of temp. So as you can see, it's just a shuffling around, and all these three lines of code are doing is basically flipping these two values so that the, the min and the max mean the same thing. I didn't have this in mind because, like, again, again, I said I used the, the min and the max, and I used the, uh, my, my version of that is basically, uh, you know, this here, let big value, small value, which actually I kind of like this better in my opinion, but, but they both work. Um, maybe I'm <laughs> probably partial because I wrote the code, but I mean, I'm proud of myself on this one. I did not look at the solution. It did take me a while. I did have to bang my head on the keyboard a bit, but I was able to get it on my own. So I'm pretty excited about that. This here, let sum equal zero. So they're basically doing what I did. They have an, they're initializing sum which is going to iterate through here, which is what you got to do when you use this type of a for statement. So for let i equals min, so they're doing the same thing I did basically on this one, so I won't belabor this, but i is less than max. The only difference is they have max plus one. I'm assuming it's because of the way they have their the code laid out, they have to put plus one in there. I had to read this for a bit to figure it out. I believe it's because there's a possibility in this code that max could equal, could be zero up here and so this this would be an invalid um, arg or condition so it, if i was zero i and max was zero this wouldn't be correct because there's no equals so it, w it would either you know zero is not less than zero so i don't know if that would get an undefined or an error but i think that's why they put the plus one in there to always make sure that max was greater than zero in case it was zero so then this would turn out, so like if i is 0, say um, 0 is less than 1, you know, which is a true statement and then increments. And then here it does the same thing as mine, so it it, um, it iterates over the sum. So sum's going to equal sum plus i. Uh, again, I just don't like the way that's wrote, so I, I write mine out manually, which is this right here. Same exact thing, final sum equals final sum plus i. And then they return the sum. So this loops, 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 and then it breaks out, returns the sum, and that that that's it. That adds that. So that is all for sum all. That's all I got through. It took me quite a while to get that done. So um, yeah, a lot, a lot of uh, trial and error with this one. A lot of pseudo code. Um, I didn't get a. I did pretty good. I didn't get hung up until I got into. I definitely had to figure this one out. This one took a bit figuring out how to, you know, how to um, basically remove any string or object types. Um, basically, anything that's put in that's not a number, um, that's not negative. That I was able to get the negative easily through this statement. Um, but yeah, I had to work through this one quite a bit. Um, yeah, so that's all for today. Um, Hope you had fun today and come along the journey and enjoyed it a little bit at the same time and learned. Um, uh, let me know in the comments how you guys did on this exercise. And please like, share, and subscribe for more content. And until next time, see ya.